Welcome to the What in the Shiba podcast with Sujia, Ed, and sleeping Archie on a boba pillow. We're just two, what do I say? I can't even concentrate. We're just two Asian Americans talking shit about shit, and I'm so distracted by what I can only say is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. I mean, if I if you told me today that I was going to see a puppy asleep in a boba, I'd be like, what are you talking about? That's ridiculous. And now I see it, and... Everything feels okay. Yeah. Right before we started this, he was sleeping on my lap, and this boba squished my nose right next to me, and I was like, oh, this top is flat. It's I was like, flat, oh. and it's round, and it's like contained. It's perfect. Yeah. There's even like a little lip. <laughs> it's like a bed. I, I can say with 100%, I've never been that comfortable in my life, like ever. Just like, I don't know what I need to do. Maybe they should make human size. Squishmallow. Do they make that? They the make squishmallow. That's dog a bed. Squishmallow beds. Yeah, but I'm a person. Yeah, no, I know. But the screwed up part is they only make them for small dogs. My my dogs could never. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna have to get him a couple now. I feel like it would room. have to be like really big, but like I want it. I want it. I want to be that comfortable and and comforted. I found a I found a pretty big. They're like triple the size of these squishmallow at Target. It's a Pikachu. And after we started this and squishmallows, I was like, oh, uh, and some like Asian lady was like looking at them, but she kept looking at me like, don't judge me, don't judge me, you know? And then after You're she like, walked away, what do you mean? Yeah. But I waited till after she walked away and I was like, how much is it? And I was like, oh, $13. I was like, it's on sale from 50 bucks. I was like, yeah, I, I can't not buy this. Oh my God. I said, do you hold it all the time now? I don't hold it. I, I lay on it. It's so, on they're, my couch. they're so comfortable. It's so comfortable. I will say though, my daughter has our house is overrun with these. It's I bought her another one for Christmas. You can, you can <laughs> buy these. Um, they have these bean bag covers, mm -hmm. and they're meant to put all your squishmallows in it, and it turns oh, it into a giant big bean bag. Bean bag. Oh, so that basically that is like a human yeah. size. And you guys have enough that I think it'll fill it up. Maybe two. I just got her another one. It's a sushi. <laughs> It's like a sushi roll. It's a roll. And the top has like salmon oh in it. Oh my God. <laughs> it's so fucking cute. I want it. I know. But I'm always. Oh my God. I'm Wait, is it like rectangular or like circular? It's like circular. Wait, is it like slightly flat top? Like I'm thinking, can Archie sleep on? <laughs> that would be. If he was sleeping. There at on Costco. A sushi? I think I got the last sushi one at the Costco I went to. So you better hurry up. Eagle Rock Costco. Here we go. Coming for you. Oh. What were we doing today? I don't even remember. Oh. Having your puppy here is so distracting. I can't think of anything. I'm like, uh, we are talking about Stuff. your dog some more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's my name? Speaking of dogs, my dog is at the vet right now. He's limping again. Yesterday he was fine. And then he went out to go eat. And I think... So the dog door is only of a certain size. You know, we can't make it too big. Otherwise humans can, it's just, then it's just a door, yeah. you know, it's, <laughs> it's not a, a dog door anymore. It's just a door. Yeah. Um, and it's, since there's, <laughs> since there's two dogs, they fight to get out the door when it's time to eat. Yeah, and bet. so I think they, I, I speculate that they ran into each other and he had ACL surgery like two years ago. And now I think it's the other one. And the, the vet did say like, you know, with these dogs, he's an American bulldog. He said, one, it's it's not a matter of of if okay. it's just a matter of when. Oh my god! Their ACLs just go. That's, um, yes. And he's just like so front loaded. Like you've seen, he's like really narrow in the back, but he's like all just like chest. Dang! And he lost so Which much. I weight know. Too. I know. We've damn near starved him because I was like, I just like, don't want him to like you know. He's like in pristine, beautiful like size. His right physique now. is yeah. perfect. It's ideal. I've really worked very hard to get in yeah, there because he was a fat boy. He was like so fat. Yeah. But, you I know. Mean, roly poly. Yeah, he was. But, you know, that's just because I, I show my love and affection with food. You guys yeah. know this. Welcome to being Asian, <laughs> immigrant, <laughs> and people of mom color. Of yeah. Fair. Um, Trauma. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I mean, we did everything. But I just, you know, it's, it's like the vet said, it's just a matter of, of when and when is now. So he's at the vet right now with my husband. You saw getting him into the car. So my dog suffers, among other things. He's got knee issues. He's got skin issues. He also suffers from anxiety. I mean, he is a mess. My other dog, she could survive in Siberia. Like she'd be fine. <laughs> she'd be Jilly's fine. You guys don't know the 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 black dog. She's fine. Huey is a fucking hot mess. Yeah. You can't do anything. So we tried to get him in the car, and he's 
one time my husband had to call me. He was at a park and the dog for no reason had a full blown panic attack. Like his ears were pinned back. His eyes were bulging out of his head. His, his gums were he was like, like turning purple. And he like has him on like video chat with me. He's like, what do I do? I'm like, go to the emergency vet. He had such a bad panic attack that it keep him like in like the doggy equivalent of like ICU for like three days. That's crazy. They had to like sedate him. Oh he God, was so expensive. So they, it was so expensive. I can't even, it was several thousands of dollars. What did we, they do? What did they do? Did they just like pump him full of in, the anti-anxiety? anxiety meds and um, sedatives? And they just like kept him like, cause they said like, if we just let him go, he would just have a heart attack and just fucking die. <laughs> What? Something. He's just like a massive, like a massive, like bad. yeah. It's so bad, like, and you can't stop him. So like, sometimes it's it's much better now now that he's on medication. But it used, he used to have those these like panic attacks all the time, especially like when there was like a loud noise or like you know fireworks or whatever, and it would last for hours. And it's like, <laughs> and he just does that for literal hours. I cannot get Whoa. him to stop. I thought it was bad with Dexter. Dexter would just like, he wouldn't have panic attacks. He would just get scared really easily and then hide in like the tub. I mean, hiding oh would be God. the best yeah. case scenario. He Jeez. does this thing. It's like really scary. And he just like, his tongue sticks out of his mouth and he, <laughs> he was very traumatized dog. Like when he was little, he, he, he went through a lot. Whoa, and so he carries so a lot of trauma. It's so sad. And so I, I baby him a lot. Cause you know, I mean, deserves to, not? I he's deserves so to, he's the sweetest yeah. boy in the world. He does nothing wrong. Um, And so, so now I'm like worried sick about him. And like my youngest daughter, who I think is maybe the most empathetic person I've ever met in my life, which I, yeah, I, I love. I say it all the time, protect that girl. I at know, all at all costs. Yeah. She like, she cried and she's like, she ran into my room and she's like, I can't look at him, I can't look at him. It makes me too sad, I can't even look at him. I'm like, well, like we have to like help him. And like she's like, I can't look at him. It makes my heart feel like it's breaking. I was like, oh, oh, honey. Sad, cry. don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. uh, it's just it's so sad. He just you know so having a sick or you know hurt pet, it's really it's it's the worst. Yeah. You know you just and the worst part it, it's like other than like. Uh, Unlike humans, like you can't ask them like on a scale of one to 10, how much does it hurt? Like if I knew he was at like a three, I'd be a fine. Yeah. Or if he could tell me like, I'm at an 11, this fucking hurts. Yeah. You know, and that's another thing too, is like going to the vet. I'm, He's like I'm a so tough skeptical. trooper. I know. I'm skeptical of vets too. They yeah. could tell me anything and they know that. And I'm not saying all veterinarians are scammers. That's obviously not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm just saying that I enter most scenarios with some degree of skepticism and I'm like, torn ACL, huh? How do I know that? Yeah. How, do I, how do I know that? How much is it? I've eight thousand dollars. What? <laughs> I've known too many instances where doctors just like were I don't know what the right term to use is overconfident or like jaded, not jaded. They're just like skeptical or mm -hmm. whatever it is. You know, like they often are like, oh, I've seen this so many times, and it's like, no, this one I think is different. Mm. Uh, everyone says that. You know what I mean? That like weird. And like, I think that leads to a lot of times like misdiagnoses or missed, missed diagnoses and misdiagnoses. Yes, <laughs> missed and miss. Yeah. Yes, okay, I, I was like, like misdiagnosis what? And missed Yeah, no, I, I get that too. But you know, I think that speaks a lot to like, everybody thinks that they are uniquely special in a certain, you know what I mean? Like I work in an industry, I can't say it, um, it's like, like when I had a baby, I automatically, I no, no, I guess I'm not a good example of it. Cause I did actually help other women give birth. But like when a woman has a wedding, all of a sudden she thinks she's a wedding planner or like when a woman has a yeah. baby, all of a sudden she thinks she's, you know, a, a midwife Dula, or yeah. like, you know, when a woman, you know, or when, you know, a man is able to like fix his anything, anything, he's we an expert in everything. Yeah, right. Yeah, anything. And I think that's, 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 I think where my skepticism comes from yes. with a lot of things. I'm like, Oh, so now, you know, everybody's a fucking professional and in, in everything. Yeah. But I've just had too many personal experiences specifically with doctors. Like for instance, yeah. my gout, Mm -hmm. The first three times I saw three different doctors, they all told me that they think that I tore my tendon in my sleep. And I was like, that sounds wild. I was like, I am a wild. <laughs> Does that happen? I was like, I'm a wild sleeper. 
I was like, I toss and turn a lot. I was like, sometimes I wake up and my head is where my feet were. And my feet are where my head were before I went to. Yeah. I don't know how it happens. You do that. I do do that. I can't, I cannot, I cannot. I, my daughter, one of my daughters does that. My older daughter. And I'm like, okay, well, so we don't co-sleep uh, ever. We're not going to do yep. that. Um, yep. Your, your calf <laughs> is across my throat. Yep. Where, where yep. are you? Where's used, the rest of your body? I used to do that to my mom. Oh my God. Every time I would fall asleep next to her or something, she'd wake up. And she'd be like, I have bruises today. <laughs> I'm so sorry. My niece, when she was little, she would like buck in her sleep. She just like kick like really hard, like out of nowhere. Same. Oh my God. Okay, well. Yeah. Sheesh. Be, be careful. So like, careful, I was like, Archie. you know, I am a violent sleeper Didn't sometimes. did you launch your dog out of the bed the other yeah, night? I say that too. So like, what? <laughs> So like they were like, yeah, you we think you like must have twisted it in your blanket or something. And then on the fourth visit, this is like over the course of a year, mm. it happened again. My foot was swollen. I couldn't walk. And they didn't figure out it was gout. Yeah. Well, so I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but all of a sudden for it was the fourth doctor was a woman. Uh huh. And she, the first three were male and of a certain non color. The fourth woman was in a South Asian woman. Mm. And she looks at it for two seconds. She goes, gout. And I was like, are you sure? I was like, because all these three other doctors were like so sure. Think that I'm sure. breaking my own yeah. body in my sleep. <laughs> yeah. She's like, they think I'm like spraining my tendon or whatever in my sleep. And she's like, no, it's gout. She's like, obviously we're going to run tests. Yeah. But she's like, I'm pretty sure it's gout. And she was right. She's. That's smart. three doctors. Yeah. That were so wrong. And then I that was like. we're all not. And then when I found Women. out it was gout, I was like, how did you come up with, I sprained my ankle in my sleep over something as obvious as gout? Yeah, so always get a second, third, fourth opinion. And make sure that one of them is a woman. <laughs> if not the first one. Yeah. But last week's episode was our Christmas episode. And this is slightly pre-recorded. Slightly pre-recorded. I don't know why I put these words. It can in this. only be. Yeah. <laughs> it is or it isn't. Just slightly. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah. We're in the future right now. <laughs> Wait, so what episode is this? Yeah. Is this this week's episode? Next this week's next episode. week's episode. This is the New Year's episode. Oh, happy New Year. Happy New Year. Wait, is this before is this happening before or after <laughs> New Year's? All of this needs to be in the podcast. This is happening the day before. No, the day after. No, wait. Ronald. This is happening a couple days before New Year's. The video is going to drop two days before New Year's. This is right before New Year's. This is coming out the Thursday right before New Year's. It's the video is going to come out. Some, yeah. Wait, what day? What day is New Year's Eve? Is Mon New Year's Eve is Sunday. Sunday. Oh, so yeah, the video so will be released on New Year's Eve. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get any. What is fun? Everyone stay happy, still. Happy New, <laughs> yeah. happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> yeah right like i've made it to midnight in the last decade please i stayed up till midnight the other night i was like i'm dying <laughs> i'm fucking dying you stayed up till midnight? my sister made me watch die hard oh that was that night well okay the first timer i'm sorry no no i've watched it but i only got through half i was like i'm so tired please let me go home she's like no we have to watch it i'm like i'm so sleepy please she's like fine we'll finish it next week Oh my god! It was midnight. I'm so tired. Um, Ron watches. Ron loves to watch Christmas movies. Yeah, like around Christmas time. Yeah, and like, I can't. I can't. There's only like a handful of Christmas movies You're that I love. Such a Grinch! I am, I oh my Grinch. god! I, yeah, what do you mean I you can't, can't watch? Well, can you watch Christmas movies at all? If I haven't seen them before. Okay. Just the idea of watching like a Christmas story. Even though on Christmas Day I will play it in the background, I just won't watch Christmas it. Christmas Story is the best. Like Elf, I'm like so over Elf. Sorry, please don't. Well, hate it doesn't me. matter because Christmas is over technically. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. See, we're, we're, in, we're in the future. Yeah. <laughs> like, thank God there isn't any new. Oh, but either way, the other day, the one Christmas movie I will watch is Gremlins. Yes, we've talked about that. Like That's one of right. my that and Die Hard. Yes. The other day. I think I finished like making a TikTok or something and I come out and I was like, did you, did you put on gremlins? You asshole. I was like, without me. He's like, I mean, I'm going to watch it again. I was like, yeah, okay, fine. But still how it's rude. My favorite Christmas movie. Yeah, I was like, how rude. Gosh, I cannot believe the year is over. I really am tripping out about that. I can't believe it. Like the girls are to school, like what's Christmas vacation. Like I can't believe that it's already 
happened. <laughs> Happy New Year. What was this year? The year of the monkey rooster. Monkey rooster? <laughs> You're just saying animals. The flying at this point. monkey. <laughs> What's next year, Zodiac, Ronald? <laughs> He's like, fuck if I know. I would look it up on my phone. I'm not an asshole. It's just my phone is being used to record part of this. Episode. You're not an asshole. <laughs> I have one. Ew. I am sometimes. <laughs> we don't have to talk about that. Was this year the rat? 2023 was the year of the. That's not right. Oh, rabbit. Oh, that's it was the year. rabbit. Yeah. You're right. Dragon. I forgot it was my your own year. year. Oh, Archie, you're a rabbit. You're a little toki. <gasps> Just like me. Boing, toki, toki, e, that's toki, toki, why. Toki. Wait, how old am I? Yeah, 40. Uh -huh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Math 12. is dumb. <laughs> yeah, 12 every 12. In of, yeah. Um, and next year is the year of the dragon. What are you? I'm a pig. I'm a pig. I'm the lucky pig. My other daughter, my, my older belly. daughter is a rabbit also. And then uh, my youngest is a little horse. Oh, I don't think I've ever met a horse. Yeah. I was like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know. It's maybe one of the less glamorous ones. I don't know what any of them <laughs> means, but yeah, I feel like it is. I feel like the most sought after are like dragon, at least in Korean culture, pig, because they're really lucky. Mm -hmm. My nephew is a golden pig. Are you okay? Hello. Stroking out. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what the others were, and I just flanked out. Here, I'll tell you. I was just going to start naming random animals again. Here, monkey. Uh, is monkey? It is the one, one, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. We've got dog, pig, rat, ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, goat, monkey, rooster. Okay. So I feel like the better way to go about it is I would not want to be a rat donkey i'm sure they all have good and bad no they qualities. do they do but like i would not want to be associated with a rat or a snake right no offense to those of you who are i feel like they are going to be offended and rightfully so <laughs> how dare you well with that being said year in review for us oh is that what we're doing what <laughs> what <laughs> I, th I don't how, even how know was what this happened this year i feel like this year was like a fleeting dumpster fire this year has been with some positives. It was a really great year for so many reasons, but it was also like a really transitional year for me. I feel like a lot of things Same. changed. I feel like a lot of things. I don't know. I, I, God, it feels like such a blur right now. It does feel what like did a blur. I do this year. Did I do anything good? I started the podcast this year. Yeah, we started the podcast this year. I went full time with content creation, only out of default because we had to close the store last year, That's right crazy. around this time. Yep. Um, and yeah, I started the journey looking for my family. I did a lot of healing with my mom, you know, in progress. I got a new son. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> Thank God. Um. Got a new car. Whatever, I guess. God, the it's a really boring year, Ed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't think I do it. Work is the same. Kids are, you know, and that's the thing is like I don't even look at my years in years, like from January to December. I look at my years from September to June, which is my kids' school year. So like that's how I see. So it doesn't feel like a new year to me. A new year to me doesn't start okay, till September. Mom. I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> no, no, just I mean, kidding. that's my. I'm just kidding. I mean, <laughs> that's kind of what I am. No, yeah, yeah, you know. So I don't really even look at it like, oh, the year is coming to an end. I'm like, oh yeah, um, this is the year my daughters are taking sports more seriously. I coached my own full season as a full time head coach. A very successful season. Very successful season. Um, I learned a lot, I think, about myself this this year. This year, it, it was kind of a, like, what am I made of kind of a year in that, like, I have so, so many things going on all the time and, like, prioritizing certain things and deprioritizing other things and making sure that, like, 
I stay focused. Staying focused has always been something that's really difficult for me. So ADHD. It's real. It's yeah, so real. So real. Um, you know, I I have some I've let some people in my life go. Um I've invited other new people into my life. So, you know, I think overall this year has been in it's I, I kind of am getting to the age right now where I'm like, no news is good news. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like things that stay kind yeah. of, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, even and like I, I'm not, yeah. I'm, I'm it's not like in for the ride anymore. Yeah, I don't yeah. want the highs and lows. I don't want, I don't want everything yeah. to go too crazy. Um, oh, did you know I was nominated for a Cheer Choice Award? What's a Cheer Choice Award? It's kind of like, for lack of a better term, like the Emmys for the internet. Oh, huh. It's like a like a yearly like award cool. show, and I was like, oh. So that happened. Um, I don't, I don't know what that means. And I don't know if I don't, I'm not going to win. I'm in the same category. I think as like mama tot and like Tabitha Aww. Brown. I was like, <laughs> that's crazy. I'm going to lose, but it's an honor to be nominated. It really is. That's sounds um, cool. I was like, wow. Um, my category Smitty is like no, I'm mindfulness, uh, mindfulness content creator. I was like, I don't Aww. know that I'd categorize myself as that, but in the context of like, that sounds very like, New agey, Honorable. I guess. Yeah, yeah, I guess. And I was like, oh, I guess I am that. You know, that's another thing too. Is like I, I really kind of trying to direct my content, but in doing so, I simultaneously have broadened my content, just because mm. I don't want it to be so hyper focused on like negativity and like racism, and you know, obviously those things are still very, very important to me. But like, I didn't want that to be just Your like the brand. only thing that yeah. I am. Cause I'm not, I'm so many things. Um, so that's been, it's been a journey, but a good one. And I, I'm, Life I'm happy. It's a journey. It is. So I read on a fortune cookie once. Fortune cookies are dumb. <laughs> but sometimes they're delicious. They're okay. Some, mm. most are bad. So what are you, what are you hoping for, for the new year? What am I hoping for in the new year? Um, health and happiness for terrible answers. People in my life, but especially my doggos. <laughs> especially my dogs. <laughs> um, it's hard not to think about the search for my family. Um, but not like that it would go well. I think I hope that I have the courage to keep going. If that makes sense. Yes. So I'm like kind of at a stage now where I'm like starting to self doubt. I'm starting to be like, Oh my God, I think I'm doing too much. Like maybe it's just not meant to be. And I know that like, if I don't finish through on my end, I'm going to regret it. But then like but you, I, I, we've talked about this before. What does that mean? I don't That's know. This is the problem. You're setting yourself up to fail. And the reason I can say that is because you don't know what the goal is. You just know you're going to feel bad if it doesn't happen. But how can you know it didn't happen if you well, don't know what I the goal well, is? Well, I think my goal is to do what I can to reach out to them. Which you are doing. Is but that, that is not necessarily a tangible goal yeah, because there's mean. not, that's so not a. what's a goal? The, you have to ask yourself that because how will you know if you failed or not if you haven't set up what the goal means? You know, if the goal is like. Oh, I think I do know. I think I want. I think well, my, I think I want my siblings to know about me. Okay. Ideally, I would also like to know about them. Okay. And I think that is the part of the reason why I am slightly doing it publicly is because, like, because I feel like I know in my heart that it is going to be a struggle for them to reach out to, like, want to meet with me. So I feel like there is a little part of me that's like, you're going to know about me whether you want to or not. Cause that's the thing is like, I don't know what my, I don't really know what my goal is. I think, right. I think that I, it sounds a little petty, but I feel like I have been erased for so long that I just want to be like, I exist. You can erase, erase me. Yes. This is who I am. But the thing about that is that you are putting that in the hands of other people. You are putting that in the hands of them acknowledging your existence. You know you exist. You know you have you belong in this world. And you know that, you know, and so to put that responsibility on them when you don't know the first thing about how they're going to react and your reaction is based on their reaction is unfair to yourself. That's kind of how I've been my whole life, I think. I know, but you can change that. 
or you can you can acknowledge well, I want it. to change it i just don't even know what my options for other goals are then well you know you could i would probably say just as an objective observer do what you can to feel like you know you have to i think define like what you would be satisfied with because here's the the truth of the matter is, is they don't you don't know what they're going to think. You don't know how they're going to react. And having gone this long, I don't, I don't imagine that they don't know at this point. And I don't want you to set yourself up in a way where if you're not, if, if this is not reciprocal, that you feel that that's a failure because that's not a failure on you. And I know you enough. Yeah, no, I am starting to understand that part. I just don't know. They could be assholes. I mean, they could be total fucking assholes who don't care about anybody but themselves. And they could be just the most self-serving group of dickheads you could ever possibly ever want to not meet. Yeah. And they could not not be that. Who, who knows? Who knows? But to, to then give them the power to define what success is to you is unfair to you because you should feel accomplished in your success already because you've done something that's really scary and you've done something that could, that has really affected you and to give relinquish your power to people you don't know in a way that you are so emotionally invested. I don't want that to hurt you. Yeah. I just like want to scream. I just want them to know me, but I don't know. I don't know. But, but, but what if you don't want to know them after you find out who they are, who knows? Yeah. You know, and, and I know we, I know that I do this and I'm not speaking for you. I know that romanticizing things in your mind, I do it all the time. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to put myself out there. They're going to meet me. They're going to love me. I'm going to love them. I'm going to go to dinner at their house and they're going to share the, the, the joys of the, who Can knows? Tell you about these? <laughs> Cause you just like <laughs> verbatim said. <laughs> What I Be because imagine. I can only imagine that that is what you would want and that is what you covet in life. And I know you well enough now to know that that is wholeheartedly your goal and your objective. And the only reason I want you to be realistic in what that could actually look like for you is because the variable is too high. The variable is too high to put this kind of magnitude and, and power into people who you don't know. And sadly, there are a lot of very selfish people who, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't know how to verbalize what I want. Quantifying a goal like this is very difficult. Yeah. I know that. I understand that. I don't know. I feel like I just, I don't know. Cause that's like tough. Cause then like, I feel like I've already done it then. Like, I just want them to know I exist. And they probably do know. But I don't know. Maybe there's like a little part of me that wants to keep going because like I want to, I don't know. So maybe it is a little bit of that. Because you don't feel satisfied. Or like maybe I just feel like if they like could know a little bit more about me, they'd be like, man. He's a great guy. I want that guy in my life. You, you want to feel validated in your existence from other people. I just... And I don't want you to. I don't know that it's even that. I just want. I think I just want to like. <laughs> family, you know. And and I understand that. And and I think a lot of people who have it take it for granted. I think I just like watch all these other videos of, you know, a lot of like adopted people. Like looking for families and they're like. You know, their siblings, their children, their parents, you know, are like. I've been look I've been looking for you, you know? And I maybe it was stupid, but I just kept being like, there's four of them. Like my chance is that at least one of them is gonna be like, hey, I wanna know you. I think And maybe that was stupid, you know. It wasn't know. stupid. Being hopeful is never stupid. Being hopeful is not stupid. I think in your case, there are extenuating circumstances around it that yeah, money. if you, yeah. And if you are easily influenced by things outside of just wanting familial love, like money, it's easy to walk away from it, especially when you don't value it. Yeah, and we don't know if they value that's that. understandable. 
My you know? dad did that. Yeah. And so I don't know why we would want to think that they wouldn't be similar when they think that what they have at stake is more important. And you and I know that no amount of money is, is more important, but we don't know them. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, I don't want you to keep investing this ideal onto these people. Cause for all I know, and from what I've experienced, really, really, really rich people are usually really, really, really bad people. Yeah. Or I have yet to meet rich people and been like, wow, they're really wonderful, loving and caring. There, cause there, there has to be some bit of, you have to be hardened a little bit in order to kind of turn a blind eye to how you made all of that money. Yeah. If unless, they, unless like, except for the slight few, like maybe that one Disney granddaughter or like, I don't think so. Jeff Bezos's ex-wife. No. Um, maybe, cause she, but she puts the money back, but I think it, that has a lot to do with the guilt of knowing how she made all that money. You know, guilt, I guess, is different. Than guilt is different than kindness. virtue, you know, and, you know, if they made all their money from like electronics and all that, who made the electronics? Where was the factory? What were those? You know what I mean? Like you have at some point, if you want to make that kind of money, you have to, you have to just ignore stuff, a lot of stuff. And, you know, unfortunately if you are collaterally one of those things that makes them face who they really are, maybe they're not ready for that. You know, maybe they're not ready to face who their father really was and face what your existence actually means to their existence. And I, I, I hope that you know better than, than that. Cause I know you do. I know that you know better than to let things like money and power and things like that just, you know, cloud your your view on what is important but we can't say the same for them yeah. we don't know them you know and and if you're the guy that could potentially disrupt this very comfortable life that they're living and and even though they know that those aren't your in, intentions we know those aren't your intentions uh, you're a little bit of a disruptor though yeah. <laughs> part of you kind of does a lot Okay. <laughs> I feel, I, well, I just feel like that's just kind of been part of my brand, you know? Yeah. Well, so then there you have it. They know that, you know, you're going to come in and there will be a disruption to, to, to their status quo. And that to them might feel like a risk that they're unwilling to take, not because of you, but because of them. So maybe that is it. Maybe I just want to underrace myself. You know what I mean? And maybe that is why the reason why I'm like, hey, look, if they're not going to meet with me, at least the world will amend right. that I am my dad's son. And that is happening. I think you can, I can see that in the things that people, how people respond and how people have taken to your story. And but that has to be in your mind, the reality of what it means to not feel erased. What does that mean? What does that look like? What if if we had to put it down on paper and list what that means and how you could feel whole in being like I exist, I belong? What does that look like? Whose acceptance is that? Yeah, I think um, someone commented on one of the videos, and I forget who it is. If you're watching, um, thank you. But they said something along the lines of like, "You've made." a name for yourself and like did stuff outside of your family. And they were like, I think that's more powerful. And I think that's like part of, like I've said it before. I think that's part of the reason why I do this is to like convince myself or the world that like I'm meant to be here, you know, because by all, by all definitions and stuff, like I feel like I wasn't but an accident, you know, the so. beauty of that is then is that you've already achieved it. You don't have to convince anybody. You don't have to convince anybody. You know you belong here. You know you exist for a reason. You know that you're here to put out better things into the world. You don't need to convince us. Yeah, I don't. I guess it's just also like really tiring to always like be there for yourself your whole life, you know? And sure. just would really nice to just be able to like hug someone. It's like my sister or my brother. I think that's that's what I like really want. I just, and maybe that is acceptance. I just want 
And I just keep picturing like this, like this hug, you know, or I don't know. I don't know. And I, I hope I'm not coming off as like harsh. No, I don't think you are. I don't want to do that. I don't really know how to quantify or verbalize right. what I'm trying to do. You and, know? But I think I that's. just know the feelings that I feel. Right. And that is totally fair and totally valid. I just know that if, as you continue on to this journey, I think you should try to put in your mind things that are going to make it feel like, because there's going to come a point where you can only do what you can do. And I don't want you to feel like you failed because you didn't achieve this goal that was left up to people you don't know yeah. in a way that there's no way you could have ever possibly tried to, to set the goal up for, you know what I mean? Like yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. so unfair to you and I don't want you to be unfair to yourself anymore. Yeah. Cause I feel like you do that to yourself a lot. Oh dear. I know. And that's not fair. And you have done braver things than I could even possibly imagine doing. I think putting yourself out there the way that you have is so fucking brave. And I look at that and I'm like, fuck man, like that's gotta be so difficult and, and gut wrenching and like so emotionally labor intensive and like exhausting. And I hope that you can still see like what an achievement that is and like how far you've come in this journey. And even if the journey were to end today, you did something you were proactive in your own life. And that is something that I hope that you can walk away from and feel really proud of because I don't think you give yourself enough credit for acknowledging like, fuck man, that is really crazy. That's so intense that you told your story to the world. You know, something that especially culturally Korean people don't do yeah. is talk about their feelings, talk about their family history, talk about their dirty laundry. They don't do that. And you did that and you did that and you showed so many people that like you can do things that are sad and hard and painful and put them out into the world and get back something from others that you didn't otherwise think you could achieve. And that is just this like acceptance from so many thousands and thousands of people who obviously that's not what's important, yeah, yeah, yeah. but what's important is to know that you did that. Yeah. You did that. That's fucking crazy. Like that's, that's hard. Like if you told me like I had to like make a video and tell everybody all of my family's dirty secrets, yeah. Holy shit, that would be really yeah. hard. And I mean, it was stuff that I've been like ashamed of my whole life. You know what I mean? And I so. want you to let go of that shame. That's not your shame. Yeah. That's not your shame, dude. Like that, you didn't do that. You were just a kid. You were just a kid who just tried to live his life. And, and now you're a man who is going to do what he can to do what he wants. And take <laughs> care of this baby. Because he needs you too, unless you leave him here. In which case, I got it. You know? Well, see, sometimes he stretches in his sleep and then he's frozen in it. Like, there's been times he'll just sleep with his arm out like that stiff. You know, so yeah. as we set, and I'm not going to say resolutions, but as we look towards the year to come, you know, I hope you can look at it as you've already achieved so much rather than like, gosh, I didn't do this and this and this. Yeah. I don't want you to do that. You know, you've achieved a lot. And, and I think you've also instilled a lot of bravery into others. And I think you've instilled a lot of hope into other people. And you've done a lot of really good work for yourself and for the community and for, you know, people who just feel also like they're alone. And I, I hope that you can go into your year, your next year, knowing you know, that, that you have made an impact on people's lives and, nice. and it might not have been the impact that you wanted on your own life, but sometimes there are things that are bigger than just that, you know? Yeah. And, and I think that you, I hope you can walk away with, with that knowledge. I agree. Thanks. You're welcome. I don't really know how to respond to that. You don't have but to. I think, I think you're right. I think, uh, I don't know how to verbalize it, but I feel like I just want to be able to feel like the thing, like believe in the stuff that you said about myself, but also. Hey, listen, <laughs> there's a very poignant line in the woman, in the, the movie, pretty woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Of course. This is the movie. Where Julia Roberts and Richard Year are laying in bed 
And she says something to the effect of the bad stuff is always easier to believe. And I don't know why that is true. Huh. And I don't know. See, I told you it's a, it's a good <laughs> one. <laughs> I don't know why that's true. And I don't know why so many of us live that way. But it is so much easier to believe the bad stuff than it is the good stuff. And I, I want to start 2024 believing in the good stuff about myself, about yeah. you and yourself, about all the people that I see out there doing what they can. Like believe, start to believe the good stuff, even though it's really difficult. And I think a lot of the stuff that we carry around with us is because we've been conditioned our whole lives to believe the bad stuff about us. Yeah, We're the troublemakers. We're the disruptors. We're the, the, the kids who don't listen. We're the rebels, whatever. Okay. But I'm also a lot of really good things. And I'm going to start believing those things because I know them to be true. I'm also a list of a hundred thousand other things. And I'm going to do my best to start believing them because I'm going to actively start to quiet the voices who tell me otherwise. Because fuck them. They yeah. lie. They lie. Those voices lie. Well, that Slight got, different that, tangent. That got deep, didn't yeah, that's it? A good deep. <laughs> Thank you, Julia Roberts. Yeah. Well, <laughs> speaking of which, did I ever tell you I met Julia Roberts? No. Yeah. She, um, when we had the gallery in the shop, uh -huh. there was this um, consignment, like an antique store. There was an antique uh -huh. store right next to us. And, um, you know, the owner of the antique store, he was a very colorful man. And, <laughs> they uh, often are. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, he would come over and we would chit chat. And, like, sometimes he would, like, give us food. Oh. You know what I mean? He was he would, like, make a charcuterie board and be like, come on over, guys. And, and one time, Ron was watching the store and I was, like, outside. And he was like, come on over. And I was like, eh, whatever. So I, like, went over. You're like, free dried meats? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, like, <laughs> hangs outside his shop all uh -huh. the time, like, right outside, because he has, like, a couple of display stuff that he puts out there, and uh -huh. then he hangs out there, because, you know, um, he doesn't want people to sail it. Sure. <laughs> so um, he's sitting, so I'm sitting outside on the, on the chair that he, stool that he normally sits in, and this woman walks up, and she has, like, no makeup on, and she, as she walks past me to go inside the antique shop, she, like, looks down at me, and she smiles, and she says, hello. And then as she's saying hello, I was like, why does she look? I was like, oh, my God, that's Julia <laughs> Roberts' mouth. I was like, you're Julia Roberts. I did this internally. I didn't I say it say, out loud. tell me you didn't I just say was like, loud. hi. And then she just walked in. I just was like, <laughs> that's Julia Roberts. She nice. She seems she like she's really, really nice. really nice. And she was, she had just had this, like, elegance to her. Well, and it was just a like billion dollars will do that. Yeah, in passing, but there's just like something about her yeah, that I was I hear just she's like, like genuinely really nice. She really was. And she like she did wasn't out shopping like glant like she I it took me a second to recognize her because like yeah. she had no makeup on. Right. And it wasn't until she moved her mouth that I was like, Why that feels that familiar? Mouth? Yeah, I was like, Why is your mouth so which Why sounds is really your creepy? Mouth <laughs> yeah. So familiar. Yeah. Which sounds don't, really creepy. Don't ever say that to anybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No matter what but it you know is, what the I mean? context. Even yeah, if you yeah. have a very distinct mouth. <laughs> your mouth looks very familiar. Oh, God. Yeah, that's why I thought it. That's why I thought it. And I was like, oh, my God, that's really Roberts. But, yeah, I, I met her, kind of. She yeah, said I mean, hello to me. She smiled. Another tangent. And that was enough. But um, what do you have planned? Nothing. And I guarantee you, whatever you say, my response will never be as profound. That's what you said. To, to 2024? Yeah. Oh, that's a weird thing to say. I was like, that's not next you year. Know, it's just more of the same. Like I said earlier, I don't, I'm not looking for big, huge leaps. Although there's one career thing that I do really want to try to make happen in 2024, which I'm not going to talk about. Retire. Just kidding. God, could you imagine? I actually don't want to retire. I want another job, but another, like the job that I really, 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 really want. Oh. Um, but like this, but bigger. Like so much bigger. Like Netflix bigger. We'll talk about it. Um, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm trying to just raise my girls and just keep the, you know, doing what I'm doing. My parents are, you know, getting older. So I want them to just, I just want to watch my parents just enjoy their lives. And I want, I I, I want nothing. I, I want for nothing right now. I want for nothing. I want to just keep going the way that I'm going. Maybe, maybe have a couple of extra hours off every other day or so, but that's really all I want. I, I want to just... Just want this puppy. <laughs> Just want the puppy. And that's it. No, I don't I don't have any sweeping 
plans. And, and I think that I'm better for not doing that because I don't want to make these big plans and then like not. Well, them. Susie's younger daughter, you're going to be not having this boba anymore. <laughs> I was going to say you, I, I was, I had it 100% planned on giving it to you. <laughs> no, I was just kidding. No, you have to take it. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm going to get, I'm going to buy him a squishmallow bed, but that was a funny thing. No, to say. this is the perfect <laughs> one. And I don't, what I if you never take find it, away it? From her. Just take it until you can find one. No, I'll take it. If I can find it, I would feel take better. Take it now. I'm not so taking a toy can, from a little girl. She's. First of all, I told you at the top of the show, she has like 600 of these. She won't even know that it's missing. You take this with you. And then when you find the replacement, you can return this one. But until then. Okay, maybe just for the ride. He has to have it. <laughs> See? Nothing else fits me. I'm too tiny. <laughs> You're not, when are you ever going to find something that's exactly the right shape for him? And the right it size. It is hilariously adorable. It's the cutest thing I've ever seen. No, you're taking it. I don't care what she says. She'll be fucking fine. I literally have one in the trunk of my car for her right now. <laughs> she she won't even notice. Kids and their toys, you kidding me? They just buy them and just leave them around the house anyway. One less thing for me to trip on in the middle of the night when I'm trying to get water from the kitchen. Well, if you trip and fall in a Squishmallow, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's usually you fall over it, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if there's so many that there's more in front, it's not so bad. Did you guys redo the flooring in your house? Yes, it's all just Squishmallows yeah. now. <laughs> oh, is it car? <laughs> no, Squishmallows. Um, so to end the year, this is my hope for, for the world, right? So this is what I do with my daughters on their birthday. I ask them, you know, Tell me, recap your year. Tell me what you're hoping for yourself for the next year. And then tell me what you hope for the world for the next year. Oh, I know what I hope for the world. We do this. Year. We do this every year on their birthdays. And I think I'm going to do this with, with, with you now. So what, what is your hope for the, the coming year for the world? Palestine is free and kids stop dying. The kids stop dying. It's a good wish. Um, I don't have a different wish. That is awesome. It weighs so heavy on me. I think about it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I can't stop thinking about it. If there were one thing that I could wish for, it is that there is peace in Palestine. <sighs> Immediately. Yeah. If we don't have to talk about or watch. I can't. Kids. I just watched one of the most disturbing ones. Yeah. I, That's all I want. And I hope for all of you individually you know, to have a prosperous year, to have a healthy year, to have the kind of year that, you know, whatever it is that you feel like is missing and you need to, to fill in the cracks with whatever that has, however that, that manifests for you. You know, I hope we all find it, but I think the hardest part for a lot of us is identifying what that is. Yeah. What does that mean? Or realizing even more so that what you're looking for is actually within you, right? which it's saying corny as loud. fuck. Well, but saying that out loud, I'm also like, oh, oh that's like, so true. Like for me, <laughs> like cliches are cliches for, for a reason. Yeah. You know what I mean? They resonate, you know? Like, oh, I'm looking for my siblings. Oh, I'm actually looking to fill this hole within right. me. I see. Ah, uh, I see. And I think that has, that speaks to a lot of things, right? Like buying things and, oh, you know, yeah, right. F whatever, it is, eating things or, you know, things, doing things to just <laughs> fill the void. Yeah. The, the, the issue is that we don't identify what the void what's the void actually that was this that's not true i did not look out for, i did not look for a dog this dog literally fell into my lap yeah. and i was like you're me and i'm gonna take care of you because yeah. one of us deserves well to have a fulfilling comfortable life well and and maybe sometimes acts of service can help us fulfill those needs in us yeah you know i was watching this thing somebody posed this or said this statement that was basically like we parent in the ways that were missing for us yeah, as children. 100%. Which is why I'm always around my kids. Yeah, which I'm is why I'm always yep. at school. Yep. I'm always coaching. I'm always on the phone yep. with them. I'm always so in their face, probably to the point where like, oh my God, my mom's so fucking annoying. Too bad. It's really cheesy, and Ron can attest to this. Every day I give Cole to affirmation. Oh, your dog. Face. Yeah, I, I hold his face, and he like really chills, and he loves it. He just sits you're there. Good and I'm like, you're a good boy. Good boy. But you're like, bad. I love you. I was like, you're like loved. So bad too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just give him affirmations every day, and he like lo he loves it. Yeah. He loves yeah. it. I mean, obviously to him, he's he just hears. Wah, 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 wah. It's the Treat. feeling. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, my daughter was doing something 
And she goes, ugh, I'm such an idiot. She said that to herself. And I said, don't ever insult my daughter again. <laughs> and she goes, what? I was like, don't ever call my daughter an idiot again. And she's like, but I'm your, oh, okay, okay. Oh, you're right, girl. you're right. I was like, <laughs> it took her a second. And then it clicked in. But, you know, we say, we say and do the things that we wish that we had. You know, even if it's with our dogs and our, our pets or our friends or our, you know, spouses yeah. and children, whatever, whomever it is, we project those things onto them. But you have to be able to turn that around and 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 point that at yourself too. Yeah. You know? Maybe, maybe what will happen in 2024. I'm looking for a family. Maybe I'll find a partner. Maybe that's what'll that's happen. That's a fun goal. That is a fun goal. I want to help. <laughs> no. He won't let me. <laughs> Listen, I'm a great wingman. Are you kidding me? I can talk to anybody about anything. <laughs> that's terrifying. Oh my God. I'd be like, hello, ma'am. Or sir. <laughs> whoever. Whoever's looking particularly. Ma'am? <laughs> hey, Who? if I call her miss, that seems condescending. Hey, girl. Yeah. <laughs> That's so creepy. <laughs> She's like, what is this old lady doing? <laughs> hey, you're so slay right now. <laughs> you're so slay right now. <laughs> girl, girl, you really ate with that outfit. Yeah, right. My daughters would die. <laughs> Period. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> like, how young is this demographic we're going? I'm hopefully still like a millennial. Actually, let's do New Year's resolutions in yours. <laughs> Mine is to is say to, all the slang yes, that I can in every use, sentence possible. Regularly use slay, <laughs> eat, slash eight. Girl, you ate. <laughs> period. And period. No, those three. No cap. And four. No and cap. Five, those four have to be said every day. We do this in front of my daughters, especially my eldest daughter, and she yeah, fucking can't. Because she's it. right at that it's age. It's mostly like when my it, when I do it, she doesn't think it's as bad just because she knows that I like am on social media. But when my husband does it, she's like, oh my God. I'm like, isn't it so cringe? And she's like, I, yeah. <laughs> and my husband's like, oh, is it cringe? And she's like, don't even say the word. He's like, cringe was a word before it was cringe, you know? And she's like, still just don't say it. I hate it. It's really funny. He tortures her, poor thing. Oh, uh, that's funny. Yeah. She's right at that age. Yeah. 12. She's real good at it too. Tween. Oh my God, so this Christmas, I want a pair of Uggs, and I want a Stanley Cup, and I want um some, whatever, oh my God. Oh my God, yeah. Stanley Cups. And I got it They're, for her. Oh my God, they, I the hate Uggs to say right it, over there. <laughs> I almost wanted to buy a Stanley Cup too. It And it's really popular because of that one video, isn't it? Yeah. Did you see it? Yeah, the one where like the whole car burned down, but the Stanley Cup. It's just like ashes and a steering wheel yeah. and a Stanley Cup. I had just bought a brand new um, Hydro Flask because remember those were in like two yeah. years ago. I have one of those. Yeah. So cringe. And I had just bought a new, <laughs> I just bought a new one. And uh, a week in, that's when that video came out. And I was like, Did this thing it? dents so easily. I was yeah. like, I want that Stanley Cup. Yeah. No, I know. Every every single girl at my daughter's middle school will have a Stanley Cup in 2024. They're all going to walk into school with them. So we try to get her a different one. Hers is like metallic purple and it like ombres into silver rather than just like a solid color. Because I want it to be, you know, a little different, a little unique. But she's going to be like, no, I want it to be just like my friend's ones. I, I want it to look like that guy's is just plain <laughs> silver with like a bunch of dents on it. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but with that. Uh, we want to wish you guys all a very happy and healthy new year. And I, I truly mean this when I say like, I hope that everybody's dreams come true. Cause you yeah. know, dreams are hard to come by these days. And if even the smallest ones can come true for any of you, I, I that's, that's my greatest wish for you all. Yeah. Find happiness, health, and a little from the Asian side. I wish you money. Lots of money. <laughs> I want, I want, I want some money. Just send that right back to us too. Oh, the yeah. energy, oh, yeah. you not your have money. The power to actually yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you could send us your money, but it doesn't have that's to be not what done. I asked for. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. just a couple bucks. No. But on that note, if you would like to be a producer on one of the sheep, what a clean segue. Yeah, that's why I do this. <laughs> Uh, please feel free to join our Patreon and become one of our producers. We would be very grateful. Otherwise, you can follow us on our socials. You can find you can find me at Sujo One on TikTok and Instagram. 
I am at Etch a Sketch with a J on most things. You can find the podcast that what in the Shiba S H I B A L. You can find this little guy on his new joint account that I changed from Colts to. It is now Archie and Colt. Oh, I didn't know that. Instagram. So I cannot wait. give him a follow. Uh, There's gonna be a lot of puppy content on there. He's gonna be way more famous than us very, very soon. <laughs> I hope so. Please make it happen. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, if you are watching us on YouTube, make sure you like, subscribe, and <laughs> I was like, yes. I don't know. We can check the mail. And oh, dang it! I was hoping I was going to freeze in the air. But otherwise, <laughs> thank you for joining us, and we will see you on the next one in the new year. Happy New Year! Okay, okay bye. bye.